Okay, now let's go ahead and visualize the LiDAR data that you've brought in from the national map. If you go to the Appearance tab, Symbology, you've got some choices there. Let's go ahead and select Elevation. And we'll just take the default for starters. Nine class, natural breaks, Jenks, University of Kansas, rock chalk. So that's what that area looks like. Okay, ranging from blue, low elevation to reddish, high elevation. And now I'm going to go ahead and create a slope, visualize it as a slope map. And so I can click around here and get the elevation and the slope and the aspect, the direction that the slope faces in degrees. All right, so far so good. Easy to bring in, in this data into Pro for sure. Now let's go ahead and create an aspect map, the bluish meaning that it's facing southwest and the reddish facing toward the northeast with, with that sharp ridge in there, as you see. And that's with a default tent class aspect map inside ArcGIS Pro. Let's go ahead and create some contours. Visualize this in contours now. Now I can click around and see the elevation slope and aspect once again. And I'm taking the default at the moment, drawing the contours with a contour interval of 5. It's important to note the elevation units, of course, this being in meters. So know your data, examine your metadata to see what your units are. So we've made a slope. We visualized it as slope, aspect, and contours. Now let's create rasters from the LiDAR data. We've just visualized it so far. We haven't really created any data set indicating slope or aspect or anything else. So let's go ahead and do that. So last data set to raster is our tool that I searched on, as you saw, and my input is the last data set. My output is going to be book cliffs underscore raster and my value field I'm going to make as elevation. Taking a look at some of the choices there, I'm good with all of those things. I'm going to get, go ahead and select run at the bottom. So now I'm running that last data set to raster command. It's a tool. It's a geoprocessing tool inside ArcGIS Pro. Once done, now I've got a raster data set for my last file. I can go ahead and go to last filters now and select ground. I can also go to last filters and select first return. What does this mean? This means I'm going to get what the ground surface is and also the first return. In my case, the first return is really going to be from the vegetation. So I'm going to get a vegetation surface, if you will. And now what I'm going to do is convert last data set to raster. And I'm going to make the output book cliffs ground. So now that I've filtered it to ground, I'm going to convert last data set to raster and run that, taking the defaults here. Now I've got a ground surface. Should be bare earth. Now, if I select first return, and now with the geoprocessing tool last data set to raster, I'm going to call that output first return. Now I'm going to have a raster of the first return. In my case, it's the tops of the vegetation, pinions and junipers in this case, especially on the northeast facing slopes. In your case, it might be buildings. It could be something else that's giving you the first return. But now my objective here is to compare the first return from the ground. Mm. So I can look at the values in there in each one, the first return and the ground. Super. Now let's use the raster calculator to get the difference between the first return and the ground. So here's the first return and the ground showing up in my choices. I'm going to take the first return minus the ground, both of them being rasters. My output raster is going to be named book cliffs because that's the area of interest for me. That's my study area, the book cliffs. And I'm going to call that vegetation height because that's really what it is in my case. The first return is the tops of the vegetation and the ground is the ground surface without the vegetation. So subtracting the two is going to give me basically the vegetation height. Should be basically zero 
on the southwest facing Mancos Shale slopes. They have no vegetation as you saw in that photograph that I took on the ground. And I'm going to change the colors so that I can visualize this perhaps a bit better. Now I'm going to change the symbology to classified, natural breaks. Is that giving me anything better? In some ways it does because now I can see that I do have a higher vegetation height for the northeast facing slopes, which was my objective to show. The northeast facing slopes and the northeast part of this image is uh, the pinions and junipers. The southwest facing slopes are truly just the Manco Shale, so there's no vegetation whatsoever on those slopes. And that gives me exactly what I was hoping to see. That's good. I'm going to go ahead and change the base map to a satellite image so I can see the satellite image of that area. Now you can see the pinions and junipers on the northeast side of the study area and the bare earth Manco Shale on the southwest side of the image. Excellent. And of course I could make this semi-transparent and look at the data with the satellite image below it as well. Take a look at some of the metadata here. All right, now let's make a hill shade out of our ground raster. We're going to take the defaults for the azimuth, which is from the northwest, the altitude 45 degrees above the horizon, and we'll call that hill SH for hill shade. We're going to run at the bottom there, and there's our hill shade. Zoom out a bit. Now we've got a very nice looking hill shade there, visualizing the surface. Now let's go ahead and create contours from LiDAR data. Geoprocessing tool contour. The input raster is our ground raster and our output polyline features is our book cliffs contour layer that we're going to create inside our geodatabase. Everything is being saved inside our geodatabase for this ArcGIS Pro project. I'm going to give it a contour interval of 5. It's in meters. So again, know your metadata, know your units. In this case, meters. And I'm going to let it create those contours and there we've got it. Ah, excellent. Turn off one of those layers in the background. go turn off that hill shade now I can see the contours on top of my satellite image so I can see the steeper slopes off to the southwest and the gentler slopes off to the northeast where the pinions and junipers are so there's my contours very nice I'm gonna label those I could spend a little more time making these labels look nicer than they are but those are the default labels. Change the symbology if I wish. And I could change any one of these labels if I wanted to. Let's go ahead now and create and symbolize index contours. I'm not happy completely with my contour line, so if you'd like to create index contours like you see on most topographic maps, here's how to do it. You want to use the contour with barriers command or tool. You've got uh, some choices there on the indexed contour interval, which is going to give you that thicker line. So I'm going to turn off a couple of these other layers so you can see this a bit better. Let's take a look at the attribute table now. And notice that I've got a type 1 and a type 2 after I run that tool. 
So now it's a matter of symbolizing on type 1 or type 2. Type 2 meaning that it's the index contour. It's the one I want to make thicker or heavier or a different color. Your choice. So let's go to that layer and just check out the values here through the labeling function. And now we'll go to symbology and as I was indicating we can go ahead and go to unique value and go to type and now type 1 and type 2 shows up and let's make type 2 a bit thicker and heavier. Your choice of course on colors, dashed versus solid, thickness, etc. I'm quite happy with that. That's, that's looking pretty good. So my regular contours are thinner, my index contours are a bit thicker and a different color as well. So I've got lots of choices in the symbology zone inside ArcGIS Pro. I've got a gallery, I've got properties, I can create my own custom symbol as well, save that, come back to it later and so on. Wonderful. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I've got my index contours there. I've got the labeling on, so the labels are dynamic, as you can see. And the labels are kind of getting in the way there, but let's turn those off and go ahead and... Ah, that's looking quite nice. I'm very happy with that. So that's creating what we call index contours with that Contours with Barriers tool inside the geoprocessing tool and inside ArcGIS Pro. Let's take a look at our study area once more. This is what we've got. We've got that southwest facing Mancoast Shale, steeper slopes and the gentler slopes off to the northeast.